In this video, I want to give another example of the uses of conditional probability. And the example I'm going to be talking about is a well-known example, which is called the Monty Hall problem. So basically, the situation here was it was a game show, and there were three doors, door one, let's call it door two, and door three. And behind one of these doors, there was a car, whereas behind the other two, there was a goat. And basically the idea here is that the contestant got to pick originally what door they would like. So this contestant might, for example, pick door one. And we know beforehand that if there is no sort of bias here, that the probability that the car is behind any one of these doors to begin with is just a third. But then the game show host, what they did then was they opened one of the other doors, perhaps they opened door two, to reveal that there was a goat behind that particular door and then the contestant was asked, would you like to stick with your choice of door one or would you like to change and pick door three? So what we'd actually quite like to do here is we'd like to work out what should the contestant do in this situation. When we frame this in conditional probability terms, what we can do is we can think about the event A as describing the event that a car is behind door one and the event B is the event that the actual game show host actually shows uh, a goat behind, or as the goat is shown, behind door two. So what we'd actually like to do here is we'd like to work out what is the probability that a car is behind door one, given that the game show host shows a goat behind door two. So it's the probability of A given that event B has occurred, which we know from our sort of rule is equal to the probability of A and B occurring, in other words, the joint probability, divided through by the probability of event B occurring. Okay, so how do we work out each of these things in turn? If we start off with the numerator, so what we're interested in working out here is the probability of event A and event B occurring, well, that's easy enough to work out. The probability of event A occurring, we know from beforehand, is just a third. And we know that the probability that the game show host will show a goat behind door two is, in this case, going to be a half, because half the time the game show host will open door two, and half the other time he will open door three, because under one of these doors there might be a car. So just to be clear here, this half here is because half the time the game show host will have to open door two, and half the time the game show host will open door three. And the time when he opens door two will either be the situation where there is a car behind door one or behind car th or door three. And the situation where he opens up door three will be just the same, except you know there's either a car behind one or there is behind two. So that's also equally likely. So half the time he'll open door two and half the time he'll open door three. So the numerator is easy enough. How do we work out the denominator? Well, so what we're trying to do here is work out the marginal probability of event B occurring. And we know from our rules for marginal probability that what we need to do is we need to sum over all the possible values um, which the first argument can take on. So the first random variable is event A. So we're summing over the probability of A and B occurring across all potential values of A. So firstly, we have our probability or the joint probability of A and B occurring. And then we have the situation where not A occurs and event B occurs. So we already know this first term here. This is just going to be a third times a half. But it's this second term which is a little bit more tricky and we need to be a bit careful when we think about this. So one of the times when not A occurs is when the car is actually behind door two. So not A here is uh, representing one third of the time, which is the third of the time the car is behind door two. But the problem is here, he'll, event B will never occur if the car is actually behind door two. So this is just a third times zero. Then the other time when not A occurs is when the car is behind three. So this circumstance here has a third probability of occurring. And in that situation, the game show host doesn't have any choice at all. He has to open door two. So that's just a third times one. So we worked out the numerator and the denominator. The numerator here is just a sixth. And if you sum together all of these terms, we're going to have a sixth plus a third. 
which works out here as three six. So we find out the sort of counterintuitive result that the probability of event A occurring, the car being behind door one, given that the game show host has opened door two, is a third, which tells us that the probability in this circumstance of not A occurring, given that B has occurred, is two thirds. So what does that tell us? It tells us that given that the game show host has opened one of the doors, we would be twice as likely to actually win the car if we changed our choice opposed to if we stuck with our original choice. Because remember here, I could have replaced all of this reasoning with event B actually representing the game show host showing a car or showing a goat rather behind door three. So we would be twice as likely to win if we switch door opposed to sticking with our own choice. And we've got there via use of conditional probability to get this quite counterintuitive result.